It had been half a year since my last big case, the People vs. Cowbelly. We had agreed to settle things there, and after a message from their team, I had thought nothing of it since. But something about the way it was handled just never sat right with me. I decided it was best to look over what little information I had on the whole ordeal, plus make a few baseless assumptions about his character to come up with some way to justify all this in my mind. Of course, you might not be familiar with my line of work, so I'll give you a quick rundown. On October 10th, 2018, I had released the case publicly, accusing Cowboy of plagiarism and general mishandling of content quality. A few grainy green screens later and I released it without too much thought, but it got more popular than I anticipated, which led to Cowbelly himself at my doorstep. I thought little of how he responded at the time because, to be honest, I was too awestruck that someone like Cowbelly would care about what some incel with 300 subscribers thought of his content. I eventually left the case behind me, considering another justice served, but looking back at it, now that I'm a little more knowledgeable on how the meme community functions and seeing firsthand the evolution of the genre, more and more things started to not line up. So that's why I'm here, telling you all this in a style which just screams that I'm taking this way too seriously. And I hope you understand where I'm coming from in saying that I'd like to present some new information about our case. Well, to be honest, Mr. Show, I don't think anyone really cares about this feud anymore, but I'll hear you out. Alright then. Now. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I just cannot talk like that for the whole video. Uh. Anyways, as I was saying, Cowbelly himself responded to my video personally. I was definitely flattered that he took the time out of his extremely hectic and busy work schedule to comment on my poorly edited rant, so much so that I backpedaled to the point where I had completely forgotten I didn't like him. Up until a month ago, I didn't really take what he said into consideration, but then I found a few very big holes in his excuses while looking back at my older content. God, my older videos looked horrible. Good thing I finally switched to Sony Vest. To summarize, Cowbelly stated that Comet Awards is a business. He has paid employees and everything. It probably breaks some child labor laws, but that's definitely not a perspective I thought of when making my original video. A show like Comet Awards isn't something you'd see as a thriving entrepreneurial effort, especially a successful one, and I couldn't really fault him for that. But the first thing that ticked something off in me was the way he worded this response, because man did he write this like a business owner scrapping together an excuse after a scandal. And I quote, If this is what the basis of an onlooker thinks, then that needs to be changed in an effort to be successful in mitigating a positive community response going forward. Hey Commenter Woods, I, I hate to break this to you, but... Your comment towards. <laughs> Jeez, and I thought I was taking myself too seriously. Feels like this comment should be mailed to me in a folder next to a cease and desist. And it's even more out of left field because it's obvious that Graham doesn't take himself or his company seriously, at least in public appearances. I know they need to care about their public image, but I feel like they forgot that their entire company is based off stealing memes from Reddit. I appreciate the... Honestly, unjust compliment, but like still, just lighten up a little bit. You're part of the meme community, you don't have to act like a professional businessman with everything you do. With this kind of response, it kind of tells me that all that meme lord stuff you do in your vlogs is just an act, which isn't something most people would take too kindly towards realizing. Now, that's just a minor complaint with this response. It doesn't make him look good, but it really isn't too big of a deal. What really matters is what's inside this response, because while this looks all sleek and professional, this definitely does not help Cowbelly's case. No point intended, of course. Firstly, he states, I'm not sure why people automatically assume that YouTube should be done out of complete passion for making videos. It's 2018, there's lots of money to be made on the internet. Now if you remember from my original video, one of my main points was that Cowbelly is no longer making his videos out of passion, and is focusing the content on making as much money as possible. I mean, I guess I made it sound more malicious than I meant to in my original video, and for that I apologize, but god 
Damn it, he says in this response that he's doing YouTube solely to make money. Obviously he's not actually saying that, but that still sounds pretty bad. I mean, it's a little better because he's got employees, he has to put, what, Jesus, $42 an hour for that kind of editing? Well, shoot, where do I sign? But seriously, I don't want to throw the word sellout around, but that's really what's going on here. He's made it so that he can mass produce Reddit meme compilations for maximum profits, and he thinks it's not that big of a deal. And again, business as business, if they want to make meme compilations corporate, be my guest, but all this seems like overcompensation. Again, you make meme compilations. It isn't that laborious of a task, and commercializing something like this, especially this fast, just seems like a really scummy practice in my eyes. Secondly, Kyberly explains that compensation of people who routinely appear in comment awards, popular original content Twitter accounts, etc., is something I'm working on as well. I reached out to many on Twitter and compensated them directly through PayPal and Venmo. I'd say the worst thing here was him using Venmo. Now that's definitely noble. Proper credit is something that not enough meme creators get nowadays. Well, I personally don't see the value in giving credit for something like a reaction image. I definitely know that it is a big problem throughout the entire community, and I applaud you for trying to do something about that. But, of course, before my praise gets out of hand, I just have a one question I'd like to ask you. Did you pay Jimmy Fallon? You can give random Stan Twitter accounts money all you want. It doesn't change the fact that you're unoriginal, and it's inherent in the type of content you produce. Compensating hard-working creators is definitely a good deed, but you're still pulling a reaction channel and thinking that if you give people the option of getting credit, that the problem magically goes away. Overall, nothing in this response is really used to rebuttal any of my claims. And that might not have been the point, but again, it didn't really make you look better either. I get that you were trying to be transparent, but it kind of backfired, and now you look pretty disingenuous. Now when I look at your update vlogs, I don't see some kid in his college dorm pandering heavily to the meme community and stealing stuff from Reddit. Now I see a large corporation CEO pandering to the meme community and compensating random people from Reddit. Now that I'm fully aware that your content is some mass-produced corporate profit-making scheme, I can never look at your channel or any of the decisions surrounding it in the same way. And that has some ramifications because man has your channel gone downhill. So, Cowboy Studios trademark copyright LLC has changed up their content as of late. Since the rise of Reddit reading videos, Comment Awards was put on the back burner in favor of what Cowboy knows will make the most money. You get the same videos in the same style, showing the same Reddit threads with the same text-to-speech voice with the same overly eye-catching thumbnails. The thumbnails especially. They definitely look like the type of thumbnail you see from a business trying desperately to gain attention from 15-year-old Reddit-obsessed meme lords. I mean, I can can somewhat justify it with the Reddit videos. They are overly eye-catching, but at least they're related to or at least representing the topic of the video in some way. What really gets me are the thumbnails for series like Tumblr Awards. While these images appear in the video, they're usually heavily edited to be more clickbaity. They're just using them in this fashion because they know people will see it and want to watch the video attached to this epic funny regardless of quality. And aside from that, the titles have gotten a lot worse as well. They often market the videos as a top posts compilation from a completely made-up subreddit, even though I can confidently say that all of them are from r slash askreddit. And the formatting isn't even consistent either. It just feels like they're throwing whatever at a wall and seeing what sticks. And unfortunately, what does stick definitely shouldn't have. Now overall, these problems aren't egregious. He didn't like kill a man so he can make daily content or anything. But I am making this video to show that no matter how professional Cavalli seemed in his response, he hasn't really changed in terms of what he does on YouTube and most likely never will in the future. Most of the people I talked with about this situation thought that Cavalli meant well and took my criticisms in stride. But looking back at it, in actuality, he really hasn't learned anything. I'll say that all of this is pretty disappointing, but do remember that this is all my personal opinion. I'm more just disappointed in the fact that Cowbelly made this professional response and made it seem like he was taking my criticisms into account, but he never really did and in fact it got worse. But that's really all I can say for now. Hopefully Cowbelly is watching this and maybe takes some of the things I've said into account. But, uh, who knows. But like I said, that's all I got for this video. I'll see you all in the next video. And goodbye.